Hey and welcome to day number nine and in this short video I show you how to build a basic setup like this, how to prepare the blueprints, how to calibrate them in a way that you can take measurements and how to organize your assembly and your components so that you can start modeling right away. In case you are curious what kind of reference material I use for this project, then go and watch day number six. It's a short unboxing video that was very fun to make and hopefully it's also fun to watch. I'm gonna link it for you in the right hand upper corner. Now, before I prepare and import the blueprints, let's take a brief look at some of the reference images that I was collecting for this project. As you can see, this canvas contains a little bit of everything. I've tried to come up with as many images as possible, not only blueprints, but also images that show the different component parts from different angles, because at the end of the day, I'm gonna use the blueprints, so the front view, the top view, the side view only for assembling the parts, but to build the actual parts, it is very, very important that you have a lot of good material that show these components from uh, different views and different angles. And under these circumstances, everything that's somehow related to the vehicle is useful. So images from the factory, images of how the vehicle was actually used, pictures of miniature models and uh, blueprints of component parts. Now let's move on with the preparation of the blueprints and I'm gonna do this with the help of the illustration that was part of the Hobby Boss miniature set. I have decided to move on with the blueprints that were included in the Nuts and Bolts journal, but I'm not gonna show them too much here because of copyright reasons, but keep in mind that the process is exactly the same. The goal here is to find out how accurate these uh, drawings are. So what do we have here? Mm, we have two side views, a top view, a front view. Actually, this one here is the front view and uh, a back view. And then I have also prepared a set of measurements. And I got these from the Nuts and Bolts journal. So I have a total length here. I have a width. I have something like um, the width of the tracks, uh, a wheelbase, I have the a total height with wheels and a total height on tracks. So some general measurement points that I'm gonna try to locate on the illustration. Now let's start with the total length of the vehicle first, which is 450 centimeters. And I've set the dimensions in Photoshop to millimeters. You can do this by right clicking on the rulers and set it from pixel to millimeters here. And then I zoom in a little bit and use the guidelines to define the length of the vehicle. So one guideline here and one at the very end. And now let's measure or let's find out how many millimeters we have in between. At the moment, this is around 108. So I'm gonna rescale the entire document or resize the entire document. Uh, let's try here something like 400%. Then I'm gonna take this measurement again. So the goal here is to reach 450. At the moment I'm at 431, so that's a little bit too short. And let's repeat process and try something like 104. Now let's see how close we get this time. And we are very close, almost 450 millimeters. That can also be interpreted as 450 centimeters. Then let's see if the front and the back view line up with the side view. So I'm gonna bring in my reference table one more time. And the total width is around 207 centimeters. So let me zoom in a little bit and draw another guideline and then another one on the right. And then let's measure the distance between these two lines. And it's a little bit more than 207, it's around 228. And this is probably, let me try here something else. I'm gonna measure from here to here because we see uh, a portion of the front wheels, they are placed a little bit wider to make the steering possible in the first place. So I'm gonna measure only the back wheels, the distance between these wheels for the total width. 
And now we are very close to the 207, around 209. And probably this measurement is still valid when you lower the vehicle and set it on the tracks so that the wheels go up and are attached on the sides of the vehicle then the total width is probably also around 207 so the front wheels go up quite a bit and also the the back wheels go up quite a bit and i think that the distance between these wheels in that situation is also around 207 so we can keep everything as it is and let's take another measurement Let's see if we can get the 24 centimeters for the tracks. And therefore I zoom in one more time and add two additional guidelines, one here and another one here. And then let's see what the distance is between these lines, 24.5. This is great. So um, of course I could take a few additional measurements, but all in all it means that we can, or we could use this illustration or this blueprint, the side view, the back view and the front view also in Fusion 360 as uh, a guideline to place the component parts in the scene. And this is exactly what I'm going to do next. So let's switch to Fusion 360 and import these views. Now I start with a clean assembly or a clean file and um, I'm going to show the origin and the planes first move to the right plane, select this one, go to insert canvas. And then I insert the side view from my workstation and I leave everything as it is. Click on okay. And it's also a good idea to go to the document settings before you do this and make sure that the units are set to centimeters. And then I have a new folder available in the browser structure. And when I right click on the image, I can calibrate it. And when you do so, Fusion allows you to pick two points, one here, and I pick the other one at the very end of the vehicle around here. And currently I have uh, a length of 1.5 centimeters, which is of course way too low. So I'm gonna set it up to 450 as I'm gonna rebuild the vehicle in its original size. and. This requires me to zoom out quite a bit and then I right click on the canvas or on the image again and click on edit canvas and this allows me to move the thing around. So let's switch to the right view next. Zoom in a little bit and I'm going to position it so that the wheels are touching the ground and then I move the canvas over so that the vertical axis um, lines up with the edge of my display and then I move the blueprint to the right so that it lines up nicely with the front of the vehicle and when you're done you can set the canvas opacity a little bit lower something like 35 and confirm the settings. Let's do the same for the top view. So I'll select the top plane first, insert canvas, insert from computer, the top view. And then it looks like nothing happens, but this is because the new blueprint or the new canvas is so small that we can barely see it. So if I zoom in really close, I can already start to scale it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees. And I'm gonna rotate it again by 180 degrees because the front has to line up with the front of the side view. Then I confirm the settings, right click on the image in the browser, select calibrate, zoom in close to the very front of the tracks. One point is here and the other point is around here. And then let's enter 450 again, right click on the canvas one more time to edit it. And then I switch to the top view and let's rotate the entire thing by 90 degrees. And then I'm going to move it in place so that it lines up with the origin again, like we have done with the um, side view. 
this looks pretty good and then let's center it like so set the canvas opacity down to 35 and confirm the settings and when i hide the origin and the planes both uh, views line up nicely you can import and place as many views as you want this way but i go ahead and select the right plane create a sketch on it zoom in a little bit hit the s key to bring up the sketch shortcut menu and then i draw a circle where the wheel is i'm going to position it approximately like so and then i add a dimension this one is around 96 centimeters and then i click on the circle hit the x key on the keyboard to turn it into a construction line and then i continue with some other elements of the blueprint and this is how you uh, find out the size and the dimensions of these parts and when you are done you can simply finish the sketch and hide the canvas if you need to and I want to point out that you need to be careful with these sketches because you can move the sketch entities around even if you are not in the sketch mode like so and this is of course not what we want in this case so I'm gonna show the canvas again I right click on the sketch edit it and under these circumstances it's usually a good idea to select all and fix it like so then the sketch lines turn green and this means that the entities are fixed and you cannot move them around anymore. The last thing I'm gonna show you today is how I handle the components. So for this reason, I save this assembly first. So let's save it as our, and this is a test assembly. And then I enter sketch mode again by double clicking on the icon. I select the circle, hit control C on the keyboard, exit the sketch, let's hide the canvas or well, let's show the canvas again then i create a new document Control n on the keyboard go to the right plane create a new sketch and then hit Control v to bring up the move and copy command and this copy and paste the circle from the other document into the new document so i confirm this and then let's make the center coincident with the origin like so this turns the sketch into a fully defined sketch. Then I finish this one and we can now create two new components. So the first one, for instance, would be my tar component. The second one is the rim component. And let's place this in the top level assembly like so. Then I activate the tar component and start another sketch on the right plane. Draw a circle start on the origin like so add some dimensions like 96 for instance so it lines up with the reference sketch then i'm exit the sketch and extrude this one a little bit like so i'm gonna save this document again this is my wheel test and when i switch over to the uh, previous assembly i can now simply right click on the wheel test document and select insert into current design like so this takes a second here it is and now i can move to the right view again and position it like so and then let's switch to the top view and position it also here accordingly like so and then i'm going to confirm this and this is basically how I set up the components. So we are dealing here with the linked component. And when I built the wheel in the next chapter in, or in the next video, I do this in the wheel file. And when I'm done, I simply open up the assembly, update the assembly and the finished wheel should be appear exactly in this place. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell so that you do not miss any new uploads. And in the next video, I will build the wheel of the Saurer RK7 from start to finish. So see you in the next one.